hardware and garden stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1220, January 5, 2024. 47 degrees was the high on this day on two occasions, 1885 huh. and again in 2019. And it was 28 below on this day on three occasions, 1884, 1912, and 1924. Hmm. Hail the flashlight king. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Yesterday, in what many people might have thought was a critical error, I read an email from a retired farmer sort who uh, broke down the Christmas light prank and said, uh, we've been had because nobody would pay that much money for extension cords. That leads to additional emails arriving today, (laughs) many among them saying, don't you dare put the Christmas light prank on ice. It has to be played every year. Okay. But uh, Mark notes, I have thousands of feet of extension cords I've purchased at auctions over the past 20 <laughs> years for pennies on the dollar. Yep. Just FYI. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Bob writes, I'm pretty sure the gentleman with the Christmas lights said he ran white two-wire electric wire that an electrician would use to wire a house. That would not cost much for 2,500 feet. Have a good day. Okay. And... Uh, but it's stiff, and it's a pain to unspool yeah. and then keep it laying flat on the ground. And Richard uh, Moncada alerts me to don't worry about having to do any research on RFK Jr., Apparently, he leads a charge to eliminate fossil fuels in the name of global warming and wants to jail people involved in oil production. He linked me to a YouTube debate uh, debate with uh, Alex Epstein on that topic. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's enough to make me realize I don't have to take on that additional burden of researching JFK. RFK. What the hell? Whatever. Either one. Take your pick. It's Oswald, Oswald conspiracy. Right. Same, Same family. family. Yeah. Oswald Oz- did it. Thanks, He's Chris. in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and John in Arizona notes the story in the strip on fentanyl stuffed toy animals from Arizona. The names yeah. of the suspects uh, deserved a huge foghorn. Fautre and yeah. Stardasha. I, I right. have that story. And actually, it's ah. more than just those two. It's, it's a couple of the other ones. Is that story coming up today, John? That, that will be in the news, yes, today. Very good. What's coming up on the news? Yeah, yes. what's this one? It's coming up. Oh, uh, just a quick note regarding the Gumption County Institute for the Criminally Incompetent. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Richard, who writes, uh, he's writing from Stetsonville, Wisconsin, Dateline Marshfield, Wisconsin. From WSAU Radio. Hey, let's go. Good morning. Cup of coffee. Saw. All right. A man was arrested early Thursday morning at the Marshfield Police Station on suspicion of his fourth OWI. I suppose that's operating while intoxicated. After telling officers he thought the building was his hotel. The identified man was found parked in a vehicle around 2.30 a.m. in the police lot. Officers noticed a man hunched over the steering wheel with empty beer cans thrown about the interior. When the man woke up, he struggled to roll down the window. Officers put him through the field sobriety test, which he could not complete. A breathalyzer uh, test clocked his blood alcohol at 0265 The man's name has not been released. A fourth OWI charge in Wisconsin is a mandatory felony that carries a 60-day jail sentence and $600 in fines. So, again, you would be uh, people who want to sleep it off. 
You got to get. You got to make sure you're at your hotel. Got to go. That's in Wisconsin, a felony after the fourth one. Yep. You'd think they'd give you a trophy since you're in Wisconsin. You're but in Wisconsin. Right. Whatever. Only four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, you amateur. <laughs> yeah. Might we talk about the uh, attempt to uh, create an eviction at a homeless situation in Minneapolis? Uh, for example, Kevin notes. How can it be an eviction when you don't, you weren't supposed to be there in the first place? Right. right. What are you being evicted you, you from? Don't own the property. Not not really sure how you have to evict anyone who can't legally occupy the city-owned land they were occupying. But that's probably a conversation to have with someone from the failed academy. My question to you is: How is anyone with Native American heritage forced to be homeless and live in one of these drug-infested, lawless, deplorable camps when we have a multi-billion-dollar sovereign Native community right here in Shakopee? The Shakopee Metawonkton Sioux is worth billions and should have absolutely no issues with constructing temporary housing complexes. Those would be tax-free, by the way, for their own people who have fallen on such hard times. I think it's shameful that the business leaders of the Shakopee, Metawonkton Sioux community don't seem to care about their own people and refuse to address homelessness with other less than fortunate Native Americans. Just a thought I had driving home from this morning. Keep pushing back and end DEI, Kevin Gordo. Uh, it's a great point. I guess I'm not in the business of telling uh, the casinos how to spend their money. Uh, true. True. And even though they're native, most of them are native people, I don't know what the... I would think this camp that they called Preciously, uh, Nenukasi, uh, are you doubting Preciously? Uh, No, um, I'm wondering why he didn't, I mean, he singled out the Shakopee tribe, but what about Little Earth right there? Yeah, I would say any, well, I don't know that, does Little Earth uh, have a means of income? Uh, well, I guess I don't know of that, but I know they are right there, right where the camp was. And some of the elders or the leaders there were in favor of moving this camp out of there because of the danger it represented to their people and the local community, the residents around that block. And what's interesting about this, Joe, is th- there's opinions on all sides, including opinions from neighbors there who want it gone and want it cleaned up. It's who the news media and the newspaper and the TVs decide to give the airtime and the print time to. It's really been fascinating to me because the the, the media is only representing one side. There, I said my piece. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll say mine. Uh, this is an example of a situation that must be viewed through the lens of the oppressed versus the oppressor. And because the academy, the political life, the uh, uh, news gathering life, they will look at those living in Nenukasi as the oppressed and everyone else is thus the oppressor, which means we have to pretend that calling it this means something, Nenukasi, when in a world uh, that wasn't defined by the oppressed and the oppressor, this kind of uh, situation with a homeless camp would be discussed with rationality. It would be discussed with logic. It would be discussed with clarity. This is a dump. It's dangerous. Right. It's unhealthy. It's a mess. It's littered. There's nothing about it that I have to acknowledge with sensitivity. You're not fooling me by calling it Nenukasi, but you're getting away with it because you're on the side of the oppressed. And the the people who acknowledge an oppressed versus oppressor world as their only world, they they cannot then, by definition, discuss this with any clarity. They can't discuss it with any accuracy. They can't discuss it with any logic or rationality. There's th- This would not have happened in a United States prior to oppressed versus oppressor. These are people who need help. Help can be created. These, for the most part, are people with drug addiction problems. They're creating nothing but a giant mess. It shouldn't exist. 
It needs to be cleaned up. And all of you people, all of you hypocrites who think this is something that needs to be acknowledged as real, this is a real situation. Mm -hmm. No, all you're doing is demeaning Native American people by pretending this is real. you got to come up with some place for these people to live. Now, we'll hearken back to a solution we saw uh, came up on this show, that brilliant scheme in Seattle where didn't they take an entire abandoned prison Mm -hmm. and it turned it into dormitory rooms or whatever with with counselors and with the drug addiction services when when walls did his phony purchase of the fruit warehouse i said can't that be divided into dorm rooms and have counselors ready and there's a million ways to go about this Mm -hmm. but you hypocrites are trying to pretend this is meaningful full of sensitivity and back to the earth and you're full of b as in b s as in s this is a dump Nobody should have to put up with it, including the people living there. Now, for you people living there, you're not owed a damn thing except the charity of reasonable souls who realize you're hurting and need help. Okay? That's it. I love everything you just said, and I have a thought. You might have to finish it for me because I don't have it nailed down. But I've often wondered how much it would take, as a dollar number here, to get these people off the street and into a facility like that. And if we could come up with a dollar amount, how come the Democrats, when they were spending that surplus, didn't throw a little something something at it and just wipe the homeless population, just take care of everything in Minneapolis and St. Paul? I can answer your question. I I think I know the answer. Well, that could be done for a figure that I'd bet anything would be far less than what it's going to cost to create this Family Leave Act. And why didn't they? And my my answer to that question is really dark. Yeah. They want them poor and homeless yeah. and on the street. They've got them right where they want Under them. their thumb. Now, I realize that's a dark thought, but... Well, first of all, you'd have to, you'd have to make... You'd have to arrive at a legislative agreement that it's a... It's a taxpayer obligation to solve this problem. As a taxpayer, I would sooner solve this problem than nine out of the ten problems that the DFL legislature came up with. Yeah. Okay. Because this yeah. is this is ridiculous, and for the uh, for the news gatherers to pretend and they go and visit some de facto leader of the of the camp and, and, and they act like this is absolutely something real. No, it's not. It's a junkyard. It's a dump. It shouldn't exist. But well, all of the hypocrites don't seem to have anything to do with it. And it's pathetic. And uh, I don't, those neighbors have to be even more vocal. No, this is a no. You're not going to camp out here. We got to come up with a better solution. It would be nice if the media gave those neighbors the the same voice they give to the camp leaders. Exactly. Go and interview the neighbors. Yeah. Have you ever been to a camp? Have you ever been to a homeless camp in the Twin Cities? I've seen. No. Have you ever gotten out and walked among them? No. I have. I would not. I have. It's ridiculous. It's pathetic. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. that's just a GL way to look at it. I guess it's a GL way to look at it. I hope it's a GL way to look at it. But they've got, there are beds available. If we're filling those, we need to create more beds. And you know what? That's your option because we're no longer, if the city of Minneapolis was governed by rational adults huh. and not products of the failed academy, you would have a situation in Minneapolis and St. Paul where it is absolutely forbidden to even create one of these camps because you would have solved that problem yeah, yeah. with other accommodations, and this cannot exist. Yeah. There's nothing glorious about it. There's nothing to be sensitive about. There's nothing to acknowledge in some sort of past historical context. This is B as in B, S as in S. Yep. The need shouldn't even be there. The You're need right. should the need will always be there, but the answer could be better. And so, but 
Minneapolis and St. Paul are not governed by rational, logical people. They're governed by products of the failed academy, white shoe lawyers, people who've never worked a day in their life doing anything meaningful. We have managed to elect ourselves into this position. It's a shame. I don't know if it can ever come back. Uh, but you can make a direct link, a direct link between these uh, suddenly sprouting up camps. When you evict, if you move them out of one area, there's another camp that springs up. Uh, there's a direct link there that the people creating the new camp are getting away with it because they're viewed as oppressed and the oppressors don't know what else to do. Just what like, do they do at the camps? Just for, like for the college presidents didn't know how to talk about the genocide of Jews or anti-Semitism on their campus. They didn't know how to because they had conflicting oppressed and oppressor groups that they were trying to balance in their pea brains. <laughs> so we right. need context. Context. Context is a means by which they can justify being wrong. All right. I didn't know you were going to be this good today. <laughs> Wait till I read to you from the uh, the lead. I won't read the whole thing. The lead editorial in the in the Wall Street Journal today is brilliant. It's exactly what we've been seeing. The rest of the journalism world is catching up to Garage Logic. Mm. Not Charles Blow of the New York Times. Brett Stevens did yesterday from the New York Times. Uh, but the New York Times couldn't wait to rush back into print with Charles Blow today, who said getting rid of Claudine Gay is absolutely racism. Isn't that the equivalent, <laughs> though, of being a... You a, a, phony a, Blow. A, Joe, Joe, it's persecution. Yeah, it's persecution. <laughs> but isn't that the same as a sports reporter saying, well, Monday I picked him to win, but Tuesday I picked him to lose. That's the same thing. Well, I guess so. Uh, you don't have a garage guy anymore. You get the whole family when you sign on with Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities and Western Wisconsin. They're uh, they're growing so well and so rapidly. They still need employees, particularly in their warehouse inventory positions. They pay well, great benefits. People stay there because they love the, the work and the competency that uh, is expressed by Precision Door of the Twin Cities in Western Wisconsin. No extra charge for weekend work. They keep you apprised of everything, including texting you saying, hey, hey, hey. Let's go. We're on our way. Come on. We're on our way. So uh, call these people or put this number uh, in your phone, in your telephone contacts, and just label it Garage Door Guy, even though you get the whole family. Right. <laughs> 612-263-6985. Or go uh, go to them online at PrecisionDoorMN.com. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com. Org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text Next Step to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Hey, <clears throat> it's the By end the way. of the world as we know oh. it, and he <laughs> feels fine. Never mind. Joe Souchere. Okay, uh, before Rookie goes, I was going to bring something up there off the air. White shoe lawyers? When the 
remember yeah. rhythm starts. That's Fry play. came out of a white shoe firm. It was a white shoe firm the three phony college presidents hired to give them the word yeah. context. I've never heard that phrase. Yeah. I love it, you, though. Well, Kenny, you must have not been here that day because I said the same thing to Joe three weeks ago. I said, oh, you did? What does white shoe lawyer mean? <laughs> and he had to explain it to me. They so don't awesome. get their hands dirty. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I love it. When we dance, you have a way with me. Stay with me. Look at this nutcase. Who is this? The Suave the Brothers. Maybe on the we had them at the this. fair. At the fair. Yeah, they're we very did good. have the Suave yeah. Brothers. This yeah. kind of makes you want to take your clothes off, doesn't it? Not really. Yeah, it's really cool. We should keep it hot on. in here. You, you should stay All fully right. clothed. <laughs> You know, it all started in 2006. What did, Matt? My friends, uh, several long-standing charities uh, got together in Minnesota, and they assembled the uh, Minnesota Masonic Charities. It was a whole bunch of Minnesota masonry guys and gals with the mission to promote even greater levels of philanthropy. And today is one of the most influential grant makers in Minnesota, an essential service provider that positively impacts outcomes in education, cancer research, elder care, children's health, community service, and the preservation of Masonic history. Visit them in Bloomington. They have a beautiful campus, and they have a great museum. And you're going to learn uh, who all the Masons are. they got a huge table that, or a, uh, I would say, uh, what do you call it, a poster, a wall that says these guys were all Masons. It's very impressive with all the names and some of the phrases that have come from the Masonry. So check out the website, mnmasoniccharities.org. It's a really neat website, and it's a really neat place, and it's a really great outfit that is very charitable. mnmasoniccharities.org. Today in the uh, Wall Street Journal, the lead editorial is Claudine Gay and America's Institutions. That's the uh, headline. Claudine Gay's resignation as president of Harvard might seem like a ripe moment for introspection at America's Institutions of Higher Learning, a.k.a. the failed academy. Those are my words. Alas, they seem to be circling the progressive wagons instead. That's the message of Ms. Gay's essay in the New York Times on Thursday that accuses her critics of racism and know-nothingism. Those who had relentlessly campaigned to oust me since the fall often trafficked in lies and ad hominem re- insults, not reasoned argument. Boy, there's an irony in that statement. Mm. They recycled tired social, uh, racial stereotypes about black talent and temperament, she wrote. Temperament. Uh, what, what an irony that she would say uh, she accuses her critics of uh, uh, n- not engaged in reasoned argument. That's mm. exactly what the failed academy has erased. Good Lord, woman. Public figures these days, no matter their race, are often targets of invective and lies, yet Ms. Gray brushed past the substantive criticism of her leadership and failure to punish anti-Semitism on campus. So did her bosses at the Harvard Corporation, which issued a statement Tuesday lauding her insight, decisiveness, and empathy. Jewish students at Harvard might disagree. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't want to read the whole thing, but the point is, like uh, there's really some uh, great paragraphs in this unsigned editorial about the uh, mystery. She blames opportunists for driving cynicism about our institutions. Well, that would be me, for example. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm cynical about the failed academy. Yeah. But elite institutions, from the press to public health agencies to social media and big business, have undermined their own credibility and fueled public cynicism. Uh, I, I wonder if she understands that she's resting her my case. Yes, those entities have undermined their own credibility because they're adopting this oppressed versus oppressor mentality. Like Ms. Gay, they've done so by impugning as deplorable half of the country that doesn't share their views. If you support voter ID laws, you're a racist. If you oppose modern progressive culture orthodoxy about gender identity or pronoun use, 
you're a bigot. Hmm. If you question the left's climate policies, you're anti-science. Well, uh, that's because you won't engage in reasoned argument. They have sought to shut down intellectual debate on everything from the Palestinian-Israel question to race and COVID lockdowns, meaning the failed academy. The campaign by the press and public health experts to discredit the authors of the great Barrington Declaration, which called for focusing focusing COVID protections on the elderly and those at high risk, was a shocking case in point. This goes on and on and on. But Claudine Gay uh, is digging herself a deeper hole, but only we see that. She and her supporters could not possibly see that because so many years of this ingrained idea of oppressed and oppressors has taken hold that uh, she she is emerging from her complete mess as some sort of heroine to that crowd that uh, look at we have another victim we have another uh we have another person evil right-wing people have put on the stake that isn't it at all But it is in their world. In a rational world, she would be admitting her mistakes, apologizing, and slinking away. Hmm. If not slinking, you know, getting a ride maybe. Got it, got it. (laughs) And admitting that she stole other people's work. (laughs) In a rational world... You don't have homeless camps and pretend they're some sort of legacy Native American monuments. Uh, In a rational world, uh, the academy would not be failed. Uh, It is miserably. And as, as, uh, as was noted yesterday by Brett Stevens, but he got it from us, the real question was why did Claudine Gay end up there in the first place? So there you have it. Uh, If you want to read the other side of this, of course, the Star Tribune has an editorial today from the New York Times by Charles Blow, who was a trustworthy lefty, and uh, they took his leash off, and he wants to tell us that this is all racism and she's a victim. And that's That's the great war in this country, people. That's the great war. It ain't fought with bullets. If you uh, do read Chuck Blow's piece, make sure you have a tissue nearby to wipe off the uh, tears of laughter that you'll have because it's absurd. And, you know, the Star Tribune uh, is certainly within its purview to write, uh, to print this editorial. Yesterday they had the opposite view from also the New York Times, Brett Stevens. This one's Charles M. Blow because when you're at the New York Times, you get to use your middle initial. Mm. Uh and he just, uh, what's he right here? He said... Uh, Mr. Blow, if he's ever referred yeah, to in print. Yeah. <laughs> but her, the campaign against her, see, see, in other words, to hold her accountable becomes a campaign against her. Right. A, a well, race, words mean something. A race-based campaign, too, by the way. Uh, the campaign against her was never truly about her testimony or accusations of plagiarism. See, Blow is asking me to disbelieve my own eyes and ears. Right. The liberals love to do that. Forget your experience. It was never about the fact that she didn't know how to address anti-Semitism, and it's certainly not about the fact that she's a pretty damn good plagiarist. Right. No, that's not what it is. It was a political attack on a symbol. See? Why, Blow, are you satisfied with your race being called symbols? Are you another product of being less made less than your whole life? It was a political attack on a symbol. It was a campaign of abrogation. It was, a, it was and is a project of displacement and defilement meant to reverse progress and shame the proponents of that progress. Mm. We, you, it, it's tough to have a country when this guy's this screwed up. 
When he's this far off the mark, we got so much work to do, I can't imagine it. One thing that she said is the campaign against me is more more about just one university and one leader. And she's right. And do you think this is the beginning of the end for the failed academy? I want it to be the beginning of, of the end of DEI. And if you eliminate DEI, the academy can recover. All right. DEI is the vile, vile presence in this culture. It's ruinous. It really drove a wedge between um, what I thought was progress. Mm-hmm. Especially since the 60s. You guys saw it then. Awful. I can't. Uh, I, I don't like uh, Blow's writings. Uh, I, uh, he is predictable. He is merely a very loyal soldier to the DEI movement, and he, uh, so be it. There's, there's nothing more I can say about him. Uh, he, along with uh, the rapidly disappearing Al Sharpton, uh, I mean, he's physically disappearing. He's just... Literally. He weighs about eight pounds. Yep. <laughs> and he, he's... Uh, the, the usual suspects are, are charging into the frontier claiming that... Uh, The likes of Claudine Gay are merely victims. Uh, It's a shame. They're they're unwilling to uh, acknowledge her individuality. They can only see her as a member of a group. Well, what do you got going there, son? Nothing. How about you? (laughs) Joe, only two leaders, though, have stepped down, right, since the hearings? Yeah. And who was the other one? Penn, was it Pence? Sally Steve? Bloodbath or Sally Horvath? What the hell's her name? Bloodbath. Uh, Sal- <laughs> it's Sally Penn. The gal at Penn State. Ken, who's Penn, Penn State. Penn State okay. gal's gone. Yeah. 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 And I had dinner with a kid who just graduated from Penn State. And uh, You just gave a name as though Rook was telling you an upcoming state fair guest. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Sally. Uh, Sally. Uh, no, I was doing that like Biden's birthday wishes. <laughs> I played the banjo. Right. <laughs> no. You don't uh, want it? Uh, no. Uh, oh. who, come on, MIT president. Let's go. Sally. Get off your damn I'm email, whatever the hell you're yeah, doing. There's, there's a good movie on that's Penn kind of distracting. Is MIT or MIT? Uh, is that two T's or one? Two T's. Cornblath? Is it Cornblath? Cornbluth. Sally Cornbluth. Sally. Sally Cornbluth is at MIT. Apparently she's Cordon Bluth. Putting, up a good fight, putting up a good fight to stay. Uh, and then the uh, Penn State was who? That was... Uh, uh, that was Liz McGill. Liz McGill is gone and Claudine Gay is gone. I see no one... Uh, opining about Liz McGill, uh, nor should they. She's as culpable as Claudine Gay, but when Claudine Gay gets reprimanded, that's that's a vicious attack on a group. Corn uh, Booth. Corn Bluth is married to Daniel Liu, a professor of pharmacology and cancer biology at the Duke University School of Medicine. They have so two what? children. Corn Bluth is Jewish. I would have gathered that. Why? That's a long distance marriage, isn't it? If she's at MIT and he's at Duke, yeah, that's what you call a perfect. That's marriage. a hell of a situation. <laughs> yeah, that's there ain't can't no, get much can, better. You know ain't no tension in that house. Right. Nope. <laughs> you like chicken cordon bleu? Uh, that, that, that's hungry man dinners and underpants every night. Yeah. <laughs> that's Denny Moore beef stew. Yeah, oh. big pile of cans in the oh. kitchen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember Laurel and Hardy when uh, Stan was finally discovered 20 years after the end of World War I? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And he's in the... In the uh, he's in the wheelchair. No, he, but first they find him in Europe. He's still in oh, the, the foxhole. In the foxhole. He's worn a path in the cans are stacked about <laughs> 400 feet. Yes. Um, I have something sad, though. Remember how dumb Tell I used to be? Yes. Uh, what was that called? That was Blockheads. Blockheads. Yeah. Uh, today in the break room at uh, the airport. They talked into their microphone. There's a guy, Oleg, he is from Ukraine, and he has left Ukraine. Oh. He's got people still. It's a serious situation, but wow. he's one of our workers. he got a pass to work, and he's very happy and a great worker. But today I was walking to the break room, and um, he had a, a can. He was eating from a can, and it just said beef. And I really... 
I oh. said, I got to buy this guy a sandwich or something. <laughs> <laughs> I felt really sweet. He's happy. Jesus. He's, he's, he's happy. Yes. It, was it? Some, was, some was directions it, on it, but it was basically. With mar- magic marker? Yes. <laughs> I mean, was it dog food or something? It, it was. I felt my heart went out for I got to buy a lunch or something like that. But yeah, he I'm wasn't gonna, Here, I'm contributing. He was happy. Yeah. He was just, it was just. Beef. Don't tell me over in the Ukraine he was like a brain surgeon, too. I haven't. <laughs> was the top of the can still visible, like peeled off at uh, the no, top? No, but that we did. He did successively. T- I, I don't know with what. He, he was eating with, with two fingers. Knife. Yeah, right, eating right. it with two fingers. Was just... <laughs> well, was he eating it with two fingers? Oh, he had utensils. Oh, okay. He's a utensils. wonderful guy, but well, I just. None of this has to do with whether he's a wonderful guy. Why is the poor guy eating out of a can hey. that just says beef? I don't know. <laughs> He was closed. He had a meat. He had a meat. Uh, Did we say Penn State? Yeah, it's it University, University of Penn. I didn't say Penn State. It's Penn. I did. I did. You oh, Penn. Penn. Penn is an Ivy League school. Harvard, <laughs> Ivy League school. MIT is not an Ivy League, is it? Man, you hit me. Look Verify at that. Stuff. You know yeah, what you man. should have asked him, Rook, as he was is digging MIT in with... Is MIT an Ivy League school? I, I believe it is, isn't it? It might be, but they don't have any sports. Well... No, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology is not an Ivy League institution, so. according to the Google. Okay. Yeah. Rook, when he was eating the uh, beef with two fingers, did you say, did you have mutton last night? Um, <laughs> no, but I will tell you, <laughs> hang on, there's a, a quick story here. I'm it working, better be. I, I'm working on a conveyor belt behind Customs, where we, where we put the carts in, okay? And I'm working with my boss, who's the owner, Jack. And we're, we're doing some hardware work. And it's very quiet, and we're in a tunnel alone together. And I said, you ever had mutton? <laughs> and he's a guy's guy, a curmudgeon, and doesn't suffer fools. What the F is mutton? <laughs> so that was, that was that's a, a, that's that was a good That's a good question, thing. Matthew. Yes. What is mutton? What is mutton? Well, he Lamb. asked me that the other day if I had mutton for I said, dinner. Did mutton for dinner last night? Like yeah, a but fool, he was, I answered him. Yeah, he was casting. Yeah. And then a couple of moments of silence went by, and I said, You ever see the Carol Burnett show? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he, his face didn't just, I just ask you that last yes, week? Yes, and he said, I suppose you think you're Tim Conway, huh? And I said, no, I'm more like Mrs. Wiggins. And he, he actually cracked a smile. But leaving the tunnel. Yeah, you're fired. He had his cell phone on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we get up, we start walking away. We're almost to the exit, and I said, oh, did you pick up your phone? And he didn't say thank you. What he said is, why did you make me walk this far without telling my phone was back there? <laughs> And he wasn't being mean. He was just saying, why did you wait so long to tell me that I forgot well, my phone? Well, why did you? Because it just popped into my head there. You want to take a time out and bring back John Height? First, I want to mention our friends at North American Banking Company, Joe. Thank you for asking. You see, I made the switch from my big national bank to North American Banking Company, and I think that you should do the same thing. They have six fantastic locations to serve you. My location's in Roseville, but you can also see them at 50th and France, Hastings, Woodbury, Shoreview, and their new location in Maple Grove. They offer the same online and mobile banking options as the other banks, but with the unparalleled service of a community bank. They are also locally owned and operated. Here's why that's a big deal. That means that loan decisions are made right here in the Twin Cities. They are not sent out of state, so this helps business owners solve problems quickly and expand their business with confidence. North American Banking Company deals with numbers every single day, but you will never be one of them. And they get it. They realize there's no shortage of banking options in the Twin Cities. So if you're tired of just being a number to your big national bank, then be sure to check out my friends at North American Banking Company. Check them out online today, nabankco.com. That's nabankco.com to learn more. North American Banking Company does banking differently. They are also a member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Stripper music? Yes, sir. Make a date for golf. And now, a man who has never had a relationship with a tree, Joe Souchere. I see Joe in a nice a yellow frock sitting on a piano with his legs crossed. Big, long bar, yeah. tie undone, martini in front of me. I'd have a Pall Mall. Oh, Scoonie's yeah. on the phone right now. Positive yesterday, brought to us by Schoon Over Body Works and Auto Care. They're in Shoreview, 1060 County Road E. Anything you need for those wheels of yours can be found at Schoonover, including wheels and tires. Get some new tires, would you? 
You're going to kill somebody in those old crappy bald things. Anyway, uh, Mike, hi. Hey, Kenny. I'm, I'm just trying to get that vision of Joe sitting on a piano with a palm all crossing his legs and a yellow dress out of my head. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, God, it's hard. It's hard. For me, all I have to do is think about the Paul Mall, and I don't think about anything else. Uh, speaking <laughs> of bad habits, uh, you have a special play for Patrick going on tomorrow, Saturday, July, uh, January 7th? Yeah. No, 6th. 6th. Six. Six. Tell, tell me about six. it, Mike. So we're, uh, so this weekend is the uh, 8th annual Play for Patrick Bantam Hockey Tournament that East U Hockey puts on every uh, every year, and, and so part of the Part of the the deal, they raise money for the foundation, and in return, we screen all of the hockey players who will be participating over the weekend. So there's 12 teams wow. from around the metro, and uh, so we're going to be screening uh, some stinky 14, 15 year old boys uh, tomorrow, which is going to be fantastic. <laughs> there's nothing better than that hockey smell, and, and yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. That's a great smell. It's better than a Paul Mall. <laughs> That smells like you've been left out wet in the woods for about four days. Yeah. So since we're at such a, a late date and it's happening tomorrow, I'm guessing that you have all the volunteers and everything you need. We do. And, I, I you know, that's the that's the really cool part about it is that, you know, during the holidays, we really didn't we, we didn't advertise. We had a, you know, save the dates. And we opened up uh, volunteer registration last week. And in 24 hours, it got filled. It was Oh, wow. Doctors, uh, medical techs, uh, non-medical volunteers. It was really cool. It was really neat. So, Mike, um, should some of these kids be arriving early to get their screening in before they hit the ice? How, how's this going to work? So they're gonna, we're going we're gonna to screen them in between games. So we're going to be at the Apple Valley Senior Center. And, uh, you know, GLers, pay attention to your social media because we might have some openings if uh, if if we have some openings, we'll get some uh, oh. we'll get some other folks in there to be able to screen if we have the room. So, it, but it awesome. looks like we're going to have the room. It just depends on the time. So, so we'll be posting that out on social media, both on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, and I'm sure Joe will be just glued to Twitter. I love that, uh, Mike. I, I like to look at that social uh, <laughs> media thing. Well, that's uh, fantastic, um, uh, Mike. And Play for Patrick, what a wonderful organization. You guys really are changing lives, and, and that's we love you for that. And we also love uh, Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care for all the stuff you do to our poor automobiles. You're rated as, oh, you know what? Before I wrap this thing up, I, I read a review couple of weeks ago when you were gone one of them was from a guy named ross who had a chevy that ross was our ross from up the hallway ross brendel oh yeah <laughs> yeah Ab absolutely absolutely and you know what we're going to be talking about uh rook's uh rook's uh jeep that we got in the shop right now that uh they're going to be getting back in there in their garage next week. So it, yeah, we'll wait for that. Be, Let's talk about that. That is uh, going to be cool. Well, we'll talk about that next week. But this was a station vehicle that you worked on, right? It was uh, one that Ross drives. I'm wondering, when you did the detail work, were you able to get the weed smell out of there? Or, oh. or what? <laughs> well, no comment. What <laughs> Ross do, wrapping around a tree? No, just some minor body work. I okay. think there was a couple door handles that were busted off, and, and so it was just routine maintenance. Yes. Wait, are people was. trying to get in just or people trying to get out? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> door handles? What the hell, Ross? Oh, man, uh, you guys are wonderful, Mike. Always rated as one of the top shops. GL's official body shop, schoonoverbodyworks.com. Here's Mr. Thanks, fellas. Thank you, Mike. Yep, see ya. Here's Mr. John Height. Thank you, Joe. This news is brought to you by the North American Banking Company. One of the seven people hospitalized after that fire early Wednesday morning in St. Paul has died. Officials mm. confirming that yesterday. The fire we uh, told you about was reported around 1.30 in the morning at a home on Arkwright Street near Hawthorne Avenue. Left six children and one adult in critical condition. Pa Cheng Vang, the father whose wife and six kids were hospitalized, has been posting updates to his page. He said Thursday the child who died was 
was his oldest daughter. Three of his other children are at high risk of heart failure and brain death because of smoke inhalation. His wife also at risk of not recovering. There was a spot of good news. Two of the children have improved from being in critical condition. Wow. Been a major break in the metro wide investigation into reports of public food benefits being stolen off the electronic benefit transfer cards impacting Minnesota families. Two men have been charged in Ramsey County Court with several counts of identity theft theft by swindle, and wrongfully obtaining public assistance theft involving the EBT cards, according to the complaints. Law enforcement allege the suspects travel across the United States committing EBT theft-related crimes. 43-year-old Julian Irmia of Castellon, Spain, and George de Mugliasa, a Romanian national who did not have a permanent address, were both booked in a Los Angeles jail last night on Minnesota warrants. The Bureau of Criminal Apprehension here, their financial crimes unit reports they've been investigating more than 120 reports of EBT theft across the metro since November, with more reports coming in daily. Well, these guys were skimmers, though, right? Uh, From what I that understand, I... They, were, they were skimmers, and they were using skimmers to steal... The money, but how hard do you have to work and think of that plan to... Pretty hard. Yeah. So they were skimming the EBT cards? or Yeah, somehow using... what, after oh, you okay. uh, swiped your EBT that. card, it would say declined, and even though you're supposed to have 50 bucks in there... Are you careful with your EBT card? Very. I don't let anybody this, touch it. Doesn't this sound like a Tony Soprano operation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it really does. Uh, update to a story we had yesterday. Former char uh, charges have now been filed against that friendly man accused of firing an AR-15 rifle to celebrate the new year. The firing wounded an 11-year-old girl in Minneapolis. 44-year-old James William Turner now is charged with gun possession by an ineligible person and reckless discharge of a gun. According to the charging documents, the 11-year-old told police she'd heard gunshots, went to the window to see what was happening when she was hit in the face by a bullet. She was taken to a hospital, underwent emergency surgery to remove bullet fragments from her face. Mary will let the guy out, won't he? I'm sure. Not I'm that sure. big of a yeah, deal. The kid, a kid didn't get that just hurt. Yeah. The uh, story uh, the fella uh, asked you about earlier uh, with the names, let's, let's go to that one. Federal investigators have busted a drug trafficking scheme that used toy stuffed animals to mail pounds of fentanyl pills from Arizona to Minnesota. Helpful. Six, wow. six men and women were charged in U.S. District Court in St. Paul with conspiracy to distribute the powerfully addictive opiate from August to December in 2022. One of the defendants, 30-year-old, Fautre Divine White. Fautre. F O apostrophe T R E. Fautre. Yeah, Fautre. Yo, charged yo, with, yo. Charged with being a felon in What's possession of a firearm and possession of a machine gun. Co defendants are 24 year old Cornell Chandler Jr., Robiel Williams, and Kiwan Bankhead, all of St. Paul, along with Star Dasha Davenport Munger. Yeah. Spelled just like it sounds, Stardasha and, and Charday Allen of Minneapolis. Charday spelled S H A R D A I. Wow. That's that's a lot. Yeah. Charges allege that several of the defendants traveled to Phoenix to get fentanyl pills from suppliers, then hid them in stuffed animals and mailed the animals to addresses in and around the Twin Cities. Law enforcement in Dakota, Ramsey, and Washington counties became aware of the trafficking, initiated a joint investigation that led to the seizure of six packages containing more than 66 pounds of fentanyl pills. All six depend, uh, defendants have appeared in court, have a joint hearing scheduled for March 7th. I'm occasionally around stuffed animals. Okay. You know, I always check them. I yeah. always squeeze for, for them. Bills? Well, you never know. There could be a lost treasure in there or got something, it. or something okay. got shipped from overseas. And I always, I always give the Just give the, a little, give the little like elephant that. or the little rabbit a squeeze. And see like squeezing the Charmin, huh? Yeah, no, squeeze. No. See if there's anything in there. <laughs> you know. Uh, one sort of a sports note Thanks here. For letting us yeah, it's, it's well, good to have yeah, hobbies. Thanks for letting us yeah, in. Well, it you is. know, you're it sitting is. there on the floor and the, and the kid's got the thing. I, I say, give me that a minute, and I just check it Let out. Let me check it. Let me see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huh. Like a customs official I am, I, uh, so I for am. cameras or microphones. I or just want to see that everything's on the up and up. Got it. 
Uh, it's now official. The Twin Cities have been chosen to host the 2026 World Junior Hockey Championship, the most prestigious hockey tournament for junior-aged players in the world. Chosen. Will be- I think you mean chosen. Yeah. Chosen. The yeah. event will be uh, will be called the 2026 World Junior Tournament, although they began on the uh, December of 2025. So she chose it baseball it's for me. So wonderful. Oh, Ricky. <laughs> God, I love him. I loved his ego, man. Yeah. Ricky was the best, according to Ricky. Man, I played in Toronto with a guy that wore a helmet. That's my favorite. <laughs> that's one of my top five stories in baseball. So John Olerud gets on base. <laughs> And Ricky said, man, I played all last year with some guy in Toronto. I wore a helmet wore in the field. wore a helmet in the field. And, and uh, Oliver says, Ricky, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the same team. Yeah, I, yeah Ricky, that, that, was, uh, that, was, Which, that was me. Ricky replied, what's coming up on the ride? Right, right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Games will be held at the Excel Energy Center as well as the 3M Arena at Mariucci and the University of Minnesota. The only other time the tournament was here in Minnesota was 1982, but it was played all across the state. This will be the seventh time the United States has hosted the tournament. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's become a big deal in the world of ice hockey. Is it well mm-hmm. attended? Yes. Okay. In national and international news, a follow-up to yesterday's school shooting, a sixth grader was killed, five other people injured when that gunman opened fire at a high school in Perry, Iowa on Thursday. Officials said the gunman was dead what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The five people injured included four students and an administrator, according to the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation Assistant Director Mitch Mortvet. Four in stable condition, one in critical but expected to survive. Police say they also found a pretty rudimentary improvised explosive device in the school, which was rendered safe by the state fire marshal and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Uh, The shooter in this case killed himself, a 17-year-old student at the school. Yeah, was there any, uh, do we have any motive yet? Uh, Motive. Only only thing I saw was that he had been bullied. Oh, the always available, he'd been bullied. I got news for you. People have been bullied since the beginning of time, and they didn't shoot each other. Yeah. Our weather forecast calling for a bit of snow the next couple of days. Not much, but that's not true for all of the U.S. Forecasters say a winter storm will bring a mix of ice and snow to a swath of the East Coast over the weekend. And uh, the uh, folks watching the weather say that'll probably snarl up traffic and cause power outages up to a foot of snow in some areas of the Northeast on Saturday and Sunday, according to the National Weather Service. It could be some of the first significant snowfall in major eastern cities in about two years. More than 20 million Americans Americans were under winter storm watches or warnings this morning, including those in a cluster of northeast states and areas around the nation's capital, according to the weather service. Let me check something. Yeah. Let me sure. check something. Okay. Tomorrow, ooh, 3.30 game is Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Okay. That could be a snow game. Yep. yep. Yeah. The night game is meaningless in terms of me watching it. It's indoors. Houston at Indianapolis. Yep. Come on. You're but not Pittsburgh snow, at Baltimore could be a weather game. Yeah. Could yep. be. I don't know. Check it out. Legend oh. has it one time an outfield coach for the Oakland A's cited John 316 to Ricky Henderson. And Ricky said, Ricky don't want to hear about John hitting 316. <laughs> Ricky hitting 330. <laughs> So my mother chose it baseball baseball for me. So she chose it baseball (laughs) for me. God, that was one. Close enough. It was close enough. I don't want to hear about John hitting 360. Yeah. (laughs) Couple of uh couple of videos making the news. Hollywood attorney Kevin Morris is backing a documentary on Hunter Biden. The untitled Morris Project would show the president's son painting. Selling his art, raising his son, and navigating everyday life as a sober adult with ongoing criminal investigations. That'd be really fun to watch. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about strip bars and piles of cocaine yeah. and illegal weapons. None of that. A film crew has been trailing the 53-year-old Hunter for years now and was most recently spotted recording uh, Hunter Biden publicly defying his subpoena from the House Oversight Committee to sit for a deposition December 13th. Now, if that was Uh, you or me, John, we'd be in jail. What's that? I'm sorry. For defying the subpoena. Yeah, I know, but it's become somewhat commonplace in Washington. Didn't he get 86 from some club? 
Well, yeah, there was he, a club in L.A. that would, would no longer have him. But it was the kind of club that's impossible was, to get uh, kicked out of yeah, because we anything goes. No, yeah, you got yeah. kicked out of that club, you really were alone. The, no, yeah. the line you had was yeah. he was too deplorable for the deplorable club. It was, he was way too bad for the bad people. Yeah. For the bad <laughs> And speaking of uh, videos, uh, President or former President Trump just posted a satirical version of Paul Harvey's famous So God Made a Farmer video in which he, Donald Trump, is the subject. If you remember Harvey's video Can we hear this? Do we have speech, it? Oh. Why well, can't with, we have this? I didn't know what was coming up. Uh, we'll find it. Everywhere. He starts with God making a farmer, the Harvey speech does. Well, the script for this video starts with... And on June 14th, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. And it <laughs> continues on from there. I got to hear this. <laughs> this former sounds really funny. <laughs> the former president shared the video on his truth. Got it? Is that it? And on June 14th, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. Stop. God's How was this done? It's got to be AI. Paul Harvey. Oh, AI. Yeah. You can instruct AI to use Paul Harvey's voice? No, Alan oh. Iverson. I think he did this in the Did you guys, <laughs> did you guys going, see the, the, new Dell, the new Dell computers are going to come with an AI button right on the I keyboard? I don't like that. Anyway, I'm sorry. I need a caretaker, so God gave us Trump. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn fix this country, work all day, fight the Marxists, eat supper, then go to the Oval Office and stay past midnight at a meeting of the heads of state. So God made Trump. I need somebody with arms, strong enough to rustle the deep state, and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to ruffle the feathers, tame cantankerous World Economic Forum, <laughs> come home hungry, have to wait until the First Lady is done with lunch with friends, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God gave us Trump. I need somebody who can shape an axe but wield a sword, who had the courage to step foot in North Korea, who can make money from the tar of the sand, turn liquid to gold, who understands the difference between tariffs and inflation, will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon, but then put in another 72 hours. On the so God made Trump. God had to have somebody willing to go into the den of this vipers. Is so awesome. Call out the fake news for their tongues as sharp as a serpent's. The poison of vipers is on their lips and yet stop. So God made Trump. God said, I need somebody who will be strong and courageous, who will not be afraid or terrified of the wolves when they attack. A man who cares for the flock, a shepherd to mankind who won't ever leave nor forsake them. I need the most diligent worker to follow the path and remain strong in faith and know the belief of God and country. Somebody who's willing to drill, bring back manufacturing and American jobs, farm the lands, secure our borders, build our military, fight the system all day, and finish a hard week's work by attending church on Sunday. And then his oldest son turns and says, Dad, let's make America great again. Dad, let's build back a country to be the envy of the world again. So God made Trump. Okay, thanks, Paul. Wouldn't it be better? 250 years wow. ago, yeah. <laughs> our Wouldn't Lord be... and Savior, Jesus Christ, <laughs> whose full name, you know, he was he was Jewish, so his full name might have been like Christowitz. Yep. But <laughs> God rose him from the dead okay. on a holiday we now call Easter. Not, Not a lot of people know that, but it's it's called Easter. It's when Jesus and the two Corinthians met the <laughs> Easter bunny and came back from the dead. Met the Easter bunny. Uh, Okay, the two Corinthians. Let's analyze the two and a half minute. Let's not. It would be so much better if Trump himself voiced it, so he could refer to himself in the third person. <laughs> like would. Ricky, he yes, would. yeah, it would be so much better. Kenny's right. Because I got bored right away, but I kept thinking how awesome it would be if he had done it himself. 
I'm, I'm well, speechless. That doesn't happen. Well, often. we got uh, kind of. We only got ten more months. Come on. He's fellas. sitting high upon his throne with a crown and a robe on. The only thing that would have made that staff. better is if he would charge people to be to listen to that. You know, ninety nine cents, like it's an <laughs> iTunes download. Don't, don't give him any ideas, Chris. That's a fantastic idea. Paul so, was uh, spinning in his grave. Yeah, you don't think yeah. Paul was a big Trump guy? Well, I don't know, but I, he, Paul was a tightwad. He probably wants the money. <laughs> sure, yeah, give me the money. <laughs> That's so why I'm he's I, mad in his yeah, grave. Right. <laughs> I didn't so, get paid for this. <laughs> some entertainment deaths uh, uh, going on this week. Actor David Soul, who earned fame as the blonde half of Starsky and Hutch on television in the seventies, has died at the age of eighty. His wife Helen Snell said that David Soul died after a valiant battle for life in the loving company of family. Uh, not only was uh, Soul an actor, but at the height of his fame, he uh, hit the music charts with the single "Don't Give Up on Us." That song hit Don't number one us, back in 1977 on both the Billboard really? and the Cash Pocket. I charts. never saw Starsky and Hush. Never saw an episode. I, I never. On, never I don't feel deprived. You would have liked Huggy Bear. Yeah. Or Captain Doby. I didn't get the car they were driving. It was such a big tank. Oh, uh, was uh, uh, the Ford. What was that big Ford from well, the mid seventies? Rookie watched it, but he would not know what the car was. It was orange. Mm-hmm. It was orange. <laughs> Glennis Johns, the British actress who had a transatlantic career that endured more than 60 years, won a Tony Award for her role in A Little Night Music and starred as a uh, suffragist in Mary Poppins, the classic film, died on Thursday in Los Angeles. Glennis was 100 years old. It was a 76 Grand Torino, really? which I always thought was a, just a kind of a big tank. Back in no. 2014, one of the original cars from Starsky sold at auction for 40 grand. Yes, it was a 76 grand Torino. That's nothing. That's cheap. Right. Yeah. Is that the one where the doors didn't work? Uh, the Clint Eastwood movie called Grand Torino. Yeah. yeah. Featured a Grand Torino. Mm. Uh, that's they're good. Far more highly collectible than 40 grand. I got news for you. <laughs> If it was in the Grand Torino, I'd have been a, a bad. movie called Grand Torino it, featured a Grand Torino. Yeah, if you had a Buick LeSabre, that title right wouldn't have been there. GL. You're welcome, GLers. You're welcome. Earlier in the week. <laughs> what kind of car does he drive? Ah, he's got a Buick LeSabre. Yeah. Early. Well, why the they movie, call it Grand Torino? The, the movie wasn't called LeSabre. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier in, the week. in Pontiac Bonneville. Right. Let's go. Les, Les McCann, a musician who helped shape the soul jazz style of the 1960s, died at the age of 88. McCann had a long music career all the way up to this past year, but he's best known for the 1969 anti war song. Compared to what? A live version recorded of the saxophonist Eddie Harris hit the charts. Their live version recorded at the Montreux Jazz Festival became a surprise million seller in 69. And guitarist, singer, and songwriter Tommy Talton died after fighting cancer for several years. Colton, 74 years old, co-founder of the band Cowboy in the early 1970s. He was the house guitarist at Capricorn Records, the label that was the driving force behind the Southern Rock of the Ullman Brothers and Marshall Tucker Band. Talton, the guitarist chosen by Greg Ullman when Ullman embarked on a solo tour during a break in the Ullman Brothers uh, Band in the 1970s, uh, played on the very good laid back record by Greg and the Greg Ullman on tour record during that era. Talton was 74, died of cancer. To this day, I can't see Greg Ullman and Cher. Getting married to this day hmm. that puzzles me. Why does that puzzle you? They so? just seemed like from two different worlds. Okay. Sometimes that you know that works. From uh, from what I've read, and of course I've read everything I can find about the Allman Brothers, they were very simpatico, except for his drug use. Aside well, I would from imagine that, imagine that'd be a problem. As, aside from that, they were, you know. She, she, to this day, speaks of him as one of the, because he was considered the ultimate Southern gentleman. You know, huh. Very polite, very. Jimmy whatever. Carter loved him. Yeah, yeah. Loved the Allman Brothers. Had him at the White House. Huh? Mm-hmm. Randy Fr- Wayne White loved Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Did he okay. have him at the White House? Who, who, who loves the, Who loves Randy Wayne White? <laughs> uh, Rosalind so Carter. I thought we were creating a threat oh, here. Oh, why don't we just take a break now and go get Johnny, uh, Joe, uh, what's his name? Patrick. 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 Yes. Pat. But I want to hear from Rookie about Zero Res first. I can tell you about Zero Res. Am I, I can... a little early for Pat? Not at all. Perfect timing. Well, here's timing. the deal. 
you're a little bit early uh, for the spring cleaning. I would say so. <laughs> That's because you're on the ball. Get in touch with Zero Res right now, and you can really, really clean up. Zero Res has got a wonderful deal for you that I'll get to, but I want to remind you of their history first. They've got a 4.9 rating on Google, 17,000 reviews, and they have a relationship with so many Minnesotans because they've been in their house, they've cleaned their carpets, their air ducts, their furniture, and right now, this is a great month to get that done. Three rooms, zero resified, starting just 119 bucks. And don't forget about your air ducts. This month takes 75 bucks off when you get your air ducts zero res clean. Call right now. And it's so important to mention GL or the rookie special. You've got to do it to get it. If you don't, then they don't know that their advertising on Garage Logic is working. That's why you do that. Get your home zero resified and also the zero res gotta love it guarantee backs it on up. 952 Z E R O R E Z. It's time to do it. They'll be in and out in no time. Bing, bang, boom. It's like going to Wisconsin. Go online to ZeroResMinnesota.com and tell them you want the rookie special. Spelled forward or backward, it spells the same. Don't delay. Get in touch with ZeroRes today. 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. I'm rolling. Here we go. Am I doing something here? After. Okay. Hey, we got a quarterback for uh, for Detroit. We're going to play Nicky. Who? Who? Mullins. Nick, oh, Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins. First, Chubby Checker. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about Chubby. Yeah. I, yeah. Saw Chubby, I saw Chubby Checker in the stands watching his daughter play for Duke against the Gophers women team in 2004. Chubby was there. I'll be cool. Back. Out. And black hair, man, just as black as could be. I, I, I was thinking it might be a little a bit of a wig there. I thought it looked like a, looked like it might be alive. But Chubby was there watching his daughter. <laughs> was his daughter's name Checker? No, the Bass was her last oh, name. I yeah. believe. I believe some young lady got impregnated when uh, when Chubby was making the rounds back there in his <laughs> rock and roll days. So yeah. that's that's the way I think that this, one works. You're out, right, but. Patrick. This movie I'm watching right now, it looks like you could take that helmet hair off and put it on the bureau. <laughs> <laughs> Misty yeah, Bass was. was a sophomore from Janesville, Wisconsin, on that Duke Ooh, basketball team. Yeah, there's probably some rock and roll joint up there back in the days of Roller rink or something in Janesville wasn't there. So, <laughs> Janesville, yeah. Wisconsin. That's what it says on the Duke's oh, roster. Home of Terry Ryan. Home of Terry Ryan. Was it a big deal that the Gopher basketballers beat Michigan? Yes, because last year, Joe, they won two out of 18 in the Big Ten. This year, so far, they've won two out of three. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a, that's an improvement. They actually are better, whether uh, that means much or not. But uh, I think it means enough that Ben is going to save his job. I think they could. I don't know if they'll win half in the Big Ten, but they might. You know, they were picked to finish 14th by both the coaches and the media and the preseason votes. And uh, and uh, but they're better than that. They're they are better this year. They got a a front line that's uh, not bad big kids and then they uh and they got four guards so uh they they, they are better and uh yeah, they get maryland here on sunday so uh here's the deal they start at 4 30 by then the seed go for season the biking season will be over for at least two hours after they get their ass kicked in uh, detroit so right. they can go to the ball game <laughs> right. you know what the heck do you have spunk that. today do you have spunk I got spunk. Okay. I just I just got off the phone with Coach Moscow. I was talking about the World Junior Tournament. You it's know? a big deal. It is a big deal. And you know what he did this year? I couldn't figure out why he had his game scheduled Sunday and Monday mm-hmm. against Colorado College. That's because the, his boys, his four guys playing today for the U.S. against Sweden, have a 10.30 flight from Sweden, and they will arrive Sunday morning at 1030 and uh, will be available to face the mighty Colorado colleges if they want them to. So mm-hmm. they got their four gophers on that team. But uh, 
it is a big deal because uh, all of them have played there. He was he was telling me about 2014. He was the assistant coach. The best player they saw in the whole tournament was a Russian named Kaprizov. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, so who is now they, so hurt we don't hear about him. I don't know when he's coming back, uh, yeah. but he got two jabs in the kidneys into in Winnipeg last weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know if it's internal bleeding or broken ribs or what the heck right. it is. But uh, and they lost again but, last night. They're depleted, Patrick. They're depleted. Oh God! I saw they called up some guy. Just ran across. They called up some guy from uh, Des Moines today that not even his parents have ever heard of him. (laughs) 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 Some complete stranger down there about their ninth leading scorer down there. So we could really play the Charles Barkley game, who he play for. (laughs) Who he play for. for. (laughs) Yeah, boy, they got him. It's unbelievable. (laughs) It's the worst. You know who would be in heaven right now, though? Hmm. Louis. Telling us about man games. Yeah, man. Louis, yeah. Louis, this would be a man game frenzy for Louis. And you've already called the Gopher or the Vikings game. You don't like our chances. Oh, no, they're going to get beat. You yeah. know, Detroit's mad, and Detroit's, you know, it, it could have worked out better if, like, they were playing at 3 in the afternoon and uh, Detroit knew they already had as much as they could accomplish. But uh, they're still trying to finish second, and they're kicking off at noon. Plus, what did uh, what did Coach Campbell say he had some kind of fury? Uh, was it restrained fury or something? He's still up. They're they're still mad at the refs, so they're going to take it out on the Vikings. Sure. Anyway. Just anyway. winning the division doesn't necessarily get you a home game. No, it oh, does. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does. Will, it yeah. will, well, then what's Detroit it's... fighting for? A well, second a home second game? Round home, a second round home. The higher game. seed. Yeah. If, you, if, the, if you finish second uh, and you, let's say you and Dallas are second and third, uh, Dallas will have to come to your place instead of vice versa. I see. Where the refs, in your place, the refs are less likely to be crooked than they were in Dallas last week. <laughs> Boy, were they bad. Yeah. Ooh, we talked about that on Monday Night Sports Talk on Wednesday. Yes. yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a theme problem with that show. And the the, last reason, the reason I asked Pat today if he had any spunk, and on Wednesday he said, I don't feel like I have any spunk. I got no oh, spunk. Yeah. I had no spunk. <laughs> spunk. I'm pretty good today. I don't know why I'm so spunk. Hey, you got spunk but, today. Yeah. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to yet another powerful, (laughs) award-winning edition of Who Who He Played For! They made it a bit on their show. Who He Played For. They'd show a picture of a guy and Chuck would say, Who He Played For? He'd have no idea. Didn't he have a wizard hat on? Yeah, he did. (laughs) I don't think they do that anymore. I don't know. I don't watch it as much as I used to. Has he not returned to television this year, Chuck? But, no, this is his last year, I believe. Oh. He said, "I think he's. I think this is his last year." But they're paying him an ungodly amount of money to be on that TNT. But that show really helped improve the popularity of the NHL the last decade. I mean, the NBA, NBA. in the last decade. I yeah. think those guys. I mean, that show just created that attitude that people enjoy about the you know the NBA. That it's there's a lot of fun involved in all this. During the run of the San Antonio Spurs and Popovich, when Charles <laughs> would start mentioning the big old girls from San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> He had to stop doing that. Finally, he? About three years ago, he stopped. He said, oh, got I think he got in trouble for that. Yeah, that'll, that'll yes. get you into some trouble. <laughs> Do you like the Timberwolves at Houston tonight? No, I don't like them any place right now. Oh. Uh, they're playing terrible. Uh, yeah, they should. They should. I mean, Houston's okay, but not. You know, Houston's a team you should beat, but they. Uh, they're they're a mess right now. They uh, they just uh, are not. Uh, are, they are not moving. They're, you know what? The ball's gotten sticky, Joe. I see. Ball. Especially when it gets to Ant's hands, it's sticky. Yeah. Because he wants to be the whole show, and uh, I don't know. They uh, they uh, they have some issues, but you know, eighty-two game season, you're going to hit your uh, downs and your ups, and uh, I think they're in the middle of a down right now. Four straight road games, I think. So. Uh, you are correct, sir. Four straight road games. Yes. Those would be games yep. on the road. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, they will be on Excellent the road. Excellent analysis. Well, you know what yes. we'll do Monday? We'll have Monday Night Sports Talk on its actual day. 
All right. That will be beautiful. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. See you again. Thank you. Goodbye. See you. Goodbye. I think he's regained his spunk. He was a little out of spunk. Yes. His how spunkiness. Some, how about some sea foam? Would that have done the trick? I don't Does know me. what happened here. Um, getting a hold of me. It's kind of like trying to get into Fort Knox, but Sean, GL or Sean, he figured out how to do it, sent me an email about his seafoam experience. Uh, Sean says, like many, I'm a firm believer that technology doesn't always make automobiles better, just more complicated to maintain. Uh, he recently purchased at a surplus auction from a Minnesota city a full-size police van that was used to haul an emergency response trailer. 22 years old, but always garage, uh, garaged, always maintained. So he anticipates a lot of life left in it. And uh, he, when he got there, it was half full of fuel, so uh, he dumped in a can of the big stuff, the seafoam truck and SUV. It's a big can, topped off the tank, fresh fuel, 6.8 liter V10, mm. big engine, smoked a little bit on startup, but then purred all the way home for a three-hour drive. Sean says, it ran like a kid getting off the bus on the last day of school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sean plans on using seafoam in the oil a couple hundred miles before doing an oil change to clean up the pistons and rings just as a fresh start to his ownership. Seafoam sure is a wonderful product in a world of bad gas. Thank you, Sean. Yes, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. For love? Yes, I'm ready. Friday. Thank you. Thank God today is Friday. T G T I Friday. First scramble of the new year. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's a <the> scramble. <laughs> Better New Year. Happy. In this country, in this country we, we say, say happy. happy. <laughs> Thank you for correcting my English, which stinks. He didn't say that. All you do is laugh. <laughs> yep, but just, then he says, Thank you for correcting my English, which stinks. Don't I didn't know he said that. You don't no. want to challenge me on this one. <laughs> don't. Okay. You're, you're right. Okay. Only. What movie was that? Trading oh, places. I didn't, I didn't. I'm not citing. I'm just. This is fact. Fact based. Was, wasn't it coming to America? Or, no, that was trading places. Yeah, yeah. Was it trading places? Yeah. yeah. Huh. No, was it? Yeah, it was. It's because to they're on the train. What? Why was yeah, he dressed the, up like a, an African king? Because they were trying to switch the suitcase, which contained the frozen concentrate <laughs> uh, crop report, the orange report. So they switched the suitcases, and they pretended, Dan Acker pretended, uh, that he they had met at a conference. Mubuya, <laughs> mubuya, mubuya. Ha, 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 ha. I remember the pavilion. We had big fun there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the one where Franken got down with a gorilla, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, they... they're cannon apricots. No, that was uh, that was Clarence Dakes from Lindhurst Security. He was oh. the one that was put in the gorilla suit. Uh, oh. Franken and Davis were just um, they were merely baggage handlers that yep. had uh, had a couple oh. of drinks. Uh, no, sir. There's uh, enough drunks on this train already. <laughs> <laughs> of all that's pretty the good. work that's been that's done in the 20th good. century, yes. of all, 21st century, of, the of all gamut. the run the gamut of all the artistry and and beautiful yeah. work right. and music that's been oh, created yes. and beautiful paintings Cars and films, and movies. everything you have that memorized. Oh, like <laughs> what, what scene do you want to start in? I got it all. Got we it hit this the thing. other day, Joe, when you weren't on, though. Yeah, you he knows every line from every movie when he worked at the theater because he saw every film a hundred times. Okay, give me the whole scene. I'd sneak in there on Officer and a Gentleman every once in a while and Deborah Winger. and uh... yeah. <laughs> Give me the scene when Eddie Murphy's on the skateboard uh, in the park. Oh, that is, hey, baby, uh, once you had a man with no legs, you never go back. <laughs> we can make it, baby. Me and you. And then he sees the cops, and the cops come up, and he say, who that? Who that? Who that? Who, who that? Who that? I ain't seen nothing since I stand on that landmine, and bang, bang, beat, bang. You were in now? What were you in? Uh, I was all over that place, basically. I was uh, Agent, uh, Agent Orange. I was Agent Orange. And then they pick him up by the arms. What yeah. happens then? Pick him up by the arms, and... Uh, 
his he's, legs. His, his legs stop, and the, the blanket falls, <laughs> and his legs. I can see. I, I have legs. Oh, praise Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus! I have legs, and then he starts walking away, and then that's when he. Uh, yeah. The other guy. Uh, he gets busted. It's pretty good. Is there a problem, offices? That's funny. <laughs> but again, all of the wonderful things that have been done. I mean, I, I gave you some films one year for Christmas, really good things, and you you and you just have to think that. Uh, that for, How many of those films still have the cellophane yeah. wrapped around it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, probably eighty percent, I'd say. <laughs> you look at the back, and it says, "This sounds pretty boring." I don't think there's any, you know. <clears throat> Fun scenes. What was the name of the club in Philadelphia that Dan Aykroyd and his soon-to-be betrothed were a member of? Oh, yeah. What was that, that club? That was the... Um, it w- I don't remember. I don't even no, know if no, it had no. a name. It, it had a name. It, I th- it, was it did. Because when Clarence Beeks is talking to the guys, <laughs> the, he says, we here at the whatever club have a thief among us. Yeah. And then they have to reach into the... Put a hand on the shoulder of the guy next to him and the other hand into his pocket of his Apparently, according jacket. to IMDb, it was also a pawn shop, the Heritage Club. The Heritage Club, yes. Where Winthrop and Valentine first met. Mm-hmm. That's probably out on the main line. It was the old rich white guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These, were all, uh, these were all well-to-do, like Randolph and Mortimer Duke. Fine uh, traders, brokers. <laughs> Only because they come to us all the way from Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. From that couple that travels the world, the traveling Lymans. It was on this day. Are you talking about January 5th? In 1805, Joseph R. Brown was born in Harford County, Maryland, a drummer boy at Fort Snelling. He would learn... The Dakota language and later become a trader, a member of the Wisconsin Territorial Legislature, a participant in both the Stillwater Convention and Minnesota co- cons- cons- yep. something convention. Sound it out. Constitutional. Constitutional Convention, the editor of the Minnesota Pioneer and the Henderson Democrat, and an officer in the U.S. Dakota War. He would also be the first lumberman to float logs down the St. Croix River and would stake out the first road from St. Paul to Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Huh. He died on November 9, 1870. Boy, did he keep Yeesh. himself busy, didn't he? What was his yeah. first job? Yeah. Joseph R. He? Brown. His first job was a, a drummer boy at Fort <laughs> Come, they told me. <laughs> Come, they told me. Oh. On this day... January 5th. In 1892, mining classes began at the University of Minnesota as Professor William R. Appleby instructed a class of four students. Hmm. Wow. And then finally on this day, January 5th, 1928, hmm. Walter Fritz Mondale was born in Ceylon, Minnesota. A lifelong public servant, as we know, he represented Minnesota in the U.S. Senate, uh, occupied the vice presidency under Jimmy Carter, ran for president against Ronald Reagan, and served as U.S. ambassador to Japan. Fritz had a long and busy life, didn't he, as a public servant? He really did. Ceylon, yeah. Minnesota. Ceylon would be down, I would guess, uh, very close to the Iowa border below Rochester, Minnesota. All right. Yep. Uh, south... Southeast East. Minnesota, Harmony Spirits down that way. Was, uh, did you find it yet on the map? It's, that's why I it's asked. It's a very it's, small yeah. town. It's not it's popping population. Up. Very small town. Yeah. Sorry, I asked. And, uh, so that was uh, Fritz Mondale, born on this day in 1928. I see. Thank you very much, GLers, and have a wonderful first new year of the new year. Have a wonderful first weekend of the new year. That's right. Right. And don't forget to download what, Rook? The uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe. Oh my gosh, it's so easy to subscribe and it won't cost you a one red cent. What does one red cent mean? Uh, probably racist, so I don't, I'm not going to make your guess. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, then, I, then I won't use it. I just, yeah. one penny. 
Uh, and that is at YouTube. You subscribe to Garage Logic on YouTube. Better yet, spend a little money and subscribe to Garage Logic as a town council member. Go to garagelogic.com for 10 bucks a month and $100 for the year. You can eavesdrop on us and tell your friends. You know what happened during the break? It was super, super funny. It's just that easy. You eavesdrop at the, at the Garage Logic Town Council as a member. Have a great weekend. Scramble. And what is this? We're getting back to normal, aren't we now? Yeah, we can. One red cent is merely a means to describe a small amount of money. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, I wouldn't pay one red cent for a ticket. Joe. I wouldn't pay one bronze uh, cent. The, uh, show yeah. the original U.S. copper penny was reddish in color. Okay. And so it was also called a red cent. But aren't we still on with the council? Thank you, GLers.